Hello, I'm Chris McDaniel with Woodworking McDaniel Style. And today I had plans when I did the video footage of showing you all of my major disasters, dangerous things that have happened while I've turned on the wood lathe. And I'm going to describe those in this video. I was going to show exactly what happened and how they happened, but the video just got too long. So I have a follow-up video where I am going to explain that what I mention in this video quite often, and that is cutting into the end grain. I honestly don't know if that's the right term. It could be across the grain. I, I really don't know, but what I mean by that is the end grain's coming this way, and you're taking a tool and you're cutting perpendicular across that, that end grain as that bowl's spinning around like this or the wood's spinning around, you're cutting with a tool. Could be a bowl gouge, it could be a parting tool, it could be a skew chisel, a uh, roughing gouge into the end grain, across the end grain. Uh, it called, it, I'll explain it, trust me. Watch that video, it's gonna be very informative. And what I'm really excited about in that video is I'm gonna show why bowl gouges are just amazing tools for turning in grain like we do in bowls. So whenever I first started turning, I didn't know what I was doing. I watched some videos, uh, I read some things on magazines, and I didn't really understand what was going on. I think even early on, I watched a couple videos and uh, people showed the wrong thing. So a uh, guy showed coming from the inside of the bowl and coming out. And I saw people coming this way and I really didn't know which way to go. And I'm, you know, when you are a beginner, you're just playing with it and you're trying to figure out how to make a bowl. And so I made some bowls with uh, carbide scrapers. And, you know, I figured that out because you're pretty much holding those flat. You can go either direction because you're scraping. Direction really doesn't matter too much there. Uh, but when I got out the bowl gouge, because everybody's like, hey, you got to learn to use a bowl gouge. You got to learn to use a bowl gouge. And uh, I took the bowl gouge. I probably was coming outside in. And then I started coming inside out and man does it remove the material fast whenever you're coming inside out like this it works great until you get out here and that's when that bottom wing that you don't want engaged cut into the end grain on me okay that bowl's coming around 900 rpm 800 rpm whatever you're turning at and here i am and i it i got that bottom wing caught here in the end grain so you should never do that you should never get that bottom wing cutting into the end grain like that either on the inside or the outside you don't want to cut into the end grain because it happens so quick we showed you how weak the wood is how weak the wood is it, is, it wants to split apart this way it's not very strong i was turning like this that wing hit and before I knew it, I mean, it happened so fast, that bowl blew apart into like three pieces. It hit the wall behind me, 20 feet behind me. Uh, part of it hit the window in front of me. And then I think a piece that hit the wall actually came up and, and landed at my feet. It was so scary that, and I had a face shield on, so please wear a face shield. Uh, but it was so scary that I actually put the lathe away for a couple of years. I mean, I might have turned a couple little small things, rolling pin or something, but I don't believe I attempted a bowl again for a year or two because I it was that <laughs> scary of an experience. I, I'm sure it hit my face shield too and everything. Um, so that's what happened though. I wanna analyze what happened and exactly what happened was I cut into the end grain with the bottom edge of the bowl gouge and i understand now what happened it, it's it it just happens so quick you can't react okay the second scariest thing that ever happened to me after the bowl blew apart was i was using a parting tool and i went to cut the tenon off of a bowl that i had just turned 
So I had the tenon on here just like this and I put the, the uh, parting tool down and I come in and I don't remember if I cut very long at all. This thing's turning around. Uh, it happened so fast. Whenever I got in just an eighth of an inch or so, that tool caught where it was cutting into the end grain. And it that's a very thin tool, as you can see. And it broke apart into three pieces. Uh, shot them, one hit the wall in front of me, uh, a part I think hit the wall behind me, and then I think I found the third part of the tool, uh, you know, a month or so later whenever I was cleaning up the shop, you know, cleaning up shavings and sawdust and things. So luckily I had a face shield on, so I really don't know where the parts hit, uh, because if you didn't have a face shield on, I mean, you could have a part hit you in the, you know, jugular or something. Uh, that's a a lot of projectiles, sharp projectiles that were flying through the air. So that happened so fast and your reaction time, you just can't react. So again, the second disaster that I had was because I was cutting, um, get this right, I was cutting into end grain, um, just like I was doing with the bowl. And like I showed you, there's just not much strength when wood is that way, it splits really easy. And so it causes tools to dig in. And it's very difficult to, uh, to cut in grain. It's, it's very, um, very strong. In grain is very strong. And tools will, either the wood is going to give and split apart. Or the tool is going to give and break. And you don't want either either one of those things to happen. In the video, I talked about parting off a tenon off of a bowl and that it caught. And I just want to clarify to make sure that I state that you do not want to do that on a face grain uh, bowl turning. You do not want to use a parting tool to part off of tenon. You would want to use a bowl gouge or a gouge to, to remove the tenon. So just want to make sure safety wise that I mention that you, you do not want to do what I did because you can have the exact same disaster happen. Okay. The, the last uh, example and the worst thing that's happened to me on the lathe, the most dangerous things, um, was I was, it was doing spindle work and the grain is running end to end mounted between centers. The, the mass, you know, the uh, angular momentum of the object is just not as great. So if, if you take a big bowl and you're turning at 800 RPM, that is a lot of angular momentum. And if something happens, you have really uh, large masses of wood uh, with a lot of speed. Uh, especially if you think about how fast the outer rim of that bowl is turning uh, in feet per second. Uh, the, the outer rim of a bowl, if you are at 1,000 RPMs, is turning way faster than the outer edge of a one-inch spindle piece that is turning at 2,000 RPMs, okay? So we can talk about that some other time, and that's why you have to... Uh, turn up on spindle work, you have to turn the RPMs up a little more because you're talking about how many feet per second you are cutting with your tool edge. Now, the general rule of thumb that I was taught is you need a face shield if you're turning bolts because of that angular momentum. And with spindle work, you really don't have to have a face shield. Uh, normally, if you're turning smaller spindle work, now, if you're turning a giant log and that thing's, you know, you got that thing spinning, you know, probably, probably a good idea. Uh, and you can always wear a face shield. That's always going to be safer than not wearing a face shield. But I've always went by that rule of thumb that if I'm doing spindle work, I just put safety glasses on. I definitely recommend safety glasses, but I don't put the face shield on. And I was turning something that was probably, I think I was turning a top and it was probably about uh, three inches or so in diameter. And I was using a bowl gouge 
and I don't normally do a lot of bowl gouge spindle work, but it does remove uh, material faster than my detail gouges do. And I'm removing all this material, right? And I'm removing it really nicely, I'm removing it, removing it, removing it. And what I did was I got this bottom wing, just like on the inside of that bowl, I got this bottom wing caught right here like that, okay? And so what am I doing in that moment? Well, I'm cutting into end grain, just like the bowl. Now, this was a, it was a pretty good chunk of wood and something's gonna give, either your tool's gonna give or the wood's gonna give. And in this case, it was the wood that was in the chuck. I think it had it mounted in a chuck but it basically rode up that tool edge, that bottom tool edge, because I let it get caught. So if you do use a bowl gouge or a big wing tool uh, when you're doing spindle work, you need to make sure that you turn this around and come back downhill like we did, like we talked about in our uh, understanding the grain or cutting with the grain video. So please watch that. I think that's a pretty good video. And what happened when I got that catch, I will say I was I was turning too fast. I probably had this thing up to 3000 RPM, which I didn't need. And uh, I, I was probably just getting lazy. And you know, the faster you turn your lathe up, the, uh, the faster it removes material and the better finish that it gives you on your cutting edge. Uh, but I did not need it to be, you know, 3000 RPM or what I think I was like at the max. So probably 3200 RPM or something. And, and whenever that tool caught, uh, I just had my safety glasses on and it took a chunk of, of wood, you know, basically like the size of a baseball. And it rode up my, uh, up the tool edge and threw it right into my head and he hit me right on the forehead. And uh, I had this big cut from the piece of wood hitting me. And then it threw it about 20 feet. After it hit my head, it actually ended about 20 feet away from me on the other side of the shop. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I got a concussion there or not. Actually, that hit me in a really good spot because, you know, if it hit me in the nose, if it hit me in, like in the temple, or even like, uh, probably the eyes would have been okay because I had safety glasses on, but you know, it could have hit me in the mouth, knocked out teeth. So probably on the forehead was a really good spot to get hit there. Uh, but do even doing spindle work, be careful. Uh, most of the time, spindle works fairly, you know, pretty safe compared compared to bowl turning or a face plate, in grain turning. Uh, but you can, uh, especially if you turn your lathe up too fast. That'd be another thing. Don't turn it up faster than you need to to get a good finish. Um, but it can still come out and and hurt you if you're not careful. So. All three of my major disasters were caused by basically the same thing. I was basically cutting across or into the end grain, uh, which I'm gonna explain in the next video. Please check that video out. It's gonna be a good video, I believe. Uh, I hope this is helpful to you, uh, not only to maybe help you see that uh, if you've had a disaster, that you're not alone, that I, I think most of us, if we're honest, would admit that we've had some bad things happen, uh, whether it was just by carelessness or we just didn't understand what the tool was doing or how the grain was running. Uh, I wanna try to encourage you that if that's happened to you and you're new, don't be alarmed. Uh, take some time, step back, and try to watch these videos and understand why things are happening and uh, don't be afraid to turn the lathe off and really think about what's going on. Uh, when the lathe is turning at 1,000 RPMs, you just cannot process what's going on. So turn the lathe off, really think about what way the grain's going, what your tool edge is gonna do if you approach it that way. I want you to be safe. I want you to learn and to be safe, and I don't want you to be intimidated by the lathe. So that's what these videos are gonna be about, to make, give you some confidence to know that uh, you know what you're doing. And I hope it's helpful to you. Subscribe if you're liking the content and I appreciate all the support. Thanks.